My name is Don Chapman. It's my privilege to be your host. And we have a tremendous guest with us today. His name is Dr. Brad Harib. He holds a degree in anatomy and neurobiology from the University of Tennessee School of Medicine. And Brad, today we're going to be really tapping into your expertise in the area of anatomy as we look at the fossil record of man. It's an exciting subject. Some folks don't think that bones are exciting, but I think there is both some incredible assumptions that need to be viewed, and we're digging not only for bones, but for truth here, aren't we? Definitely digging for truth. Uh, you, you can learn quite a bit if you, if you actually take the time to look at the evidence and not just assume and, and use some artistic license. So, uh, the next one is probably the most popular of all the missing links. Uh, Australopithecus afarensis, better known as Lucy, and uh, I suspect Lucy. most of the viewers out there have heard of Lucy. She is the most famous of all the missing links. When Lucy was first put on the scene, there was a lot of pomp, a lot of flair, but nobody came back around after we'd had time to look at the bones, take measurements, and actually do scientific studies. Nobody came back around to give what Paul Harvey likes to say the rest of the story, and I want to share just a couple of points with you about Lucy. Here you see an artist's depiction of what she or he supposedly looks like and yet we know today Lucy was nothing more than an ape. If we look at her fingers, her limbs, they match precisely to what an ape would look like. Number two on the, the screen here you notice it says locked wrist. Two fellows, Brian Richmond and David Strait, realized they were up in the Smithsonian Institute looking at old primate papers and they, they found one that talked about primates having the ability to lock their wrists. Yes. Now, they hadn't seen anything written about that in the human fossil record, so they went literally down the hall to where there was a Lucy replica, and lo and behold, they realized Lucy has locking wrists. In fact, Maggie Fox made a comment on it. She said, a chance discovery made by looking at a cast of the bones of Lucy. The most famous fossil of Australopithecus afarensis shows that her wrist is stiff like a chimpanzee's. This suggests that her ancestors walked on their knuckles. When they first presented Lucy, they said, hey, she has a barrel-shaped ribcage. She's on her way to becoming human. But I want you to read uh, one of the comments made by Peter Schmidt after they shipped him a replica of Lucy. He said, when I started to put the skeleton together, I expected it to look human. Everyone had talked about Lucy being very modern, very human, so I was surprised by what I saw. I noticed that the ribs were more round in cross-section, more like what you see in apes. Human ribs are flatter in cross-section, but the shape of the ribcage itself was the biggest surprise of all. The human ribcage is barrel-shaped, and I just couldn't get Lucy's ribs to fit this kind of shape. But I could get them to make a conical-shaped ribcage like what you see in apes. Probably one of the most important finds was discovered by one of the, the famous paleontologists, the Leakey family, Mary, and it's called the Laetoli Footprints. Here you see a picture of Mary. She's measuring these footprints. This is from National Geographic several years ago, 1979. What I want you to notice, Don, is, is those particular footprints, it's not just a single set. The importance being there's a child's set of footprints in this picture. Now, this is the picture that was included in National Geographic, and you'll notice they have these ape-like creatures, and one of them is holding an infant. And you think, why in the world did the artist draw that particular picture? Here's the reasoning. Mary Leakey, in describing it, said, the prints in one of the trails did indeed turn out to be double. I'll simply summarize here by saying that we appear to have prints left three and a half million years ago by three individuals of a different stature. It's tempting to see them as a man, a woman, and a child. The problem with that is there's nothing that has ever done that except modern human beings. But they have already labeled this thing as 3.5 million years old. So Mary Leakey, she was stuck. She actually gave this thing scientific name Homo, which is what we are, but the species was indeterminate. That is, we don't know. Russell Tuttle, who had been invited by Mary Leakey to study the footprints, wrote, a barefoot homo sapiens could have made them. He said, in all dis discernible morphological features, the feet of the individuals that made the trails are indistinguishable from those of modern man. So we have human footprints is basically what you're saying. 
And, and the date is significant because that makes it older than Lucy? That's the catch they're in. Yes. How do you have, I mean, he's basically saying a human, a, a homo sapien could have made them, but they won't take that step because they had already dated the ash. So, so you've got the human before the missing link. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Donald Johansson, the, the discoverer of Lucy, said, make no mistake about it. They're like modern human footprints. If one were left in the sand of a California beach today and a four-year-old were asked what it was, he would instantly say that somebody had walked there. He wouldn't be able to tell a hundred other prints on the beach, nor would you. And because of their pre-commitment to these evolutionary ages, they found themselves caught. Let me show you one last quote, uh, Jeremy Rifkin when asked what the fossil record really shows, I think he, he summed it up very well when he said, what the fossil record shows is nearly a century of fudging and finagling by scientists attempting to force various fossil morsels and fragments to conform with Darwin's notions, all to no avail. He said, today the millions of fossils stand as very visible, ever-present reminders of the paltriness of the arguments and the overall shabbiness of the theory that marches under the banner of evolution.